Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. You know, it's often funny to see movie studios try to rip off popular box office hits to try to make a quick buck. Take, for example, the year that gave us Home Alone and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Both of these films were gigantic blockbusters as well as family-friendly. So Touchstone Studios got an idea. Duh! What if we took these two films that have nothing in common, put them together, and create our own worthless piece of crap? You'd come up with three ninjas. A shameful attempt to try to combine and cash in on other people's creative abilities. This film was so blatant in what it was ripping off. Obviously, they were taking the martial arts from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the house traps that were taken directly from Home Alone. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm not giving studio moguls enough credit. I mean, nobody could be so financially desperate or creatively shallow to attempt such an act. I mean, are they really so stupid enough to combine movies like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Home Alone? They are when they friggin' advertise it like that! Take a look! Crosses Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Home Alone right on the front cover. Abandon all originality, ye who enter here. Now with that said, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how bad can a film crossover between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Home Alone possibly be? Pretty bad. The film is about three boys who study ninjutsu with their grandpa Mori, which is kind of odd seeing how he's Japanese and not one of these other characters looks Asian. So over the summer, he teaches them how to use nunchucks, swords, Siamese stars, and a bunch of other weapons that every parent would have a heart attack if they saw their kids using. The boys' names are as follows. Michael, the chubby kid. Jeffrey, the forgettable middle kid. And Samuel, the oh my god, I swear that's a miniature version of Jamie Lee Curtis kid. That's cool. It's interesting how chubby Grandpa is considering he's supposed to be a ninja master. Except, of course, whenever he's doing flips and kicks. Then he miraculously loses 20 pounds all of a sudden. I wonder why that is. Where is he? Yoo-hoo! Up here! Grandpa, how'd you do that? Next time, try attacking in a non-smoking section. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa has obviously not taught them good humor yet. That's very funny. At the end of the summer, Grandpa decides to give them all ninja names. You shall be known as Rocky. You shall be known as Coke. A little one. Since your energy begins and ends with your tummy, you shall be known as Tom Tom. Tom Tom. <laughs> Grandpa likes to make fun of other people's shortcomings. Grandpa's a kind of a goofball in a way, but when it comes to martial arts and stuff, he's pretty cool. Yes, the line between goofball and senile insanity is often a thin one. Don't be overconfident. Now, the kid's father is an FBI agent who's after the sinister crime boss Snyder, who apparently deals with trading killer weapons designed by Nerf. He also doesn't believe in hiring bodyguards with those useless weapons and silly guns. Nope, Snyder's diabolical gang is made up of 100% ninjas, in the black suits and everything. Well, I have no idea how this is going to connect to the story with the three boys, but let's just wait and see. Their father always comes close to catching Snyder, but always manages to just miss him. I'd love to stay in chat, but I've got to fly! You like that? You like the way the copter came up after I said the word fly? I trained him to do that, you know. Cost me like thousands of dollars, but the reaction on your face? Totally worth it. You're a geek. Then Snyder actually drops by Grandpa's house and asks him to train his evil henchmen because apparently they have some history together. But because this movie is afraid to have any semblance of plot, he sends his men to attack Grandpa and the three boys. Here, the boys find out another ancient secret about martial arts. Apparently, all ninjas are made out of cartoon sound effects. You know, on a side note, I should point out that the philosophy of the ninja is to blend into your environment. Not stick out like a sore thumb! You're only supposed to wear those in the dark, you morons! Shut up! So the boys actually do live a semi-normal life, or as close as possible given the circumstances. They go to school, they have odd-looking girlfriends, and they even have bullies they have to put up with, or the closest thing this movie considers to be bullies. Yeah, little horsey, how about some hay? Seriously, how come movie bullies are always so lame? I mean, look at these guys. They look like a mix between Fat Albert and the Little Rascals. <laughs> In yet another pointless scene, the boys challenge the bullies to a basketball game in order to win back the bike of one of their girlfriends. How many points do a game? Ten. Duh. Fine, we'll spot you nine. You take first out. Cake. Did they just say cake? Cake. 
Did I just jump a dimension or something? I mean, when did cape become a form of popular slang? Good God, it's like the writers just didn't care anymore, and so they started tossing out random words just praying to form a sentence. Cake? That's like in the middle of a sentence, me just suddenly shouting out... Stuffed cabbages. Why? I don't know. Because it makes about as much sense as cake! So obviously, the boys beat the bullies and get the girlfriend's bike back. I wouldn't mind this scene so much if it wasn't for this one certain part. Alright, look, he obviously steps on something here, but they never address what it is. What the hell did he step on? Was he just gliding on his ninja awesomeness? I mean, it makes no sense! Whatever. So, alright, we see where the Ninja Turtles references come from, but what about the Home Alone stuff? Well, Snyder decides he wants to kidnap the three boys and hold them ransom so he can keep their father off his case. So he hires three surfer criminals to abduct the kids and bring them to his lair. The good news is, the delivery guy just created the babysitter with the pizza. The bad news is, they're carrying guns. At first, the kids want to do the smart thing and notify the authorities. We'll call the police. Hold it! If we can take these three robbers ourselves, then maybe Dad will see that our ninja training's worth it. Summer training or probable death? I guess I go with the summer training too. So oddly enough, instead of using their ninja skills, they devised diabolical traps to snatch the burglars with. I love how even though they were notified of the burglars' presence just a few moments ago, that they somehow put together a plan that actually has phases. Prepare for phase one. Okay, phase two. We were in there for like two minutes! How can you come up with a plan that has phases to it? It's a very good question, O gnarly one. Look at this, one of them actually does the Home Alone phase here. I mean, that's how much this movie doesn't give a crap. This really sucks! Half of these traps don't even make sense. I mean, how can you slip on jelly beans for crying out loud? Wouldn't you just squash them? And for that matter, how come everybody carries a gun but never uses them? Does this movie exist in any realm of reality? It's sensitive. After a while, Snyder's ninja show up and kidnaps the kids properly. After learning about their kids' abduction, their parents realize there's only one logical solution. A short, balding senior citizen who studied more Japanese buffets than he has Japanese martial arts. Oh, that's reassuring. So rather than send in a SWAT team of qualified professionals, it's Grandpa Mori who's gonna pull off the rescue. Yeah, I know, just go with it. So the kids are being held on a cargo ship crawling with second-rate pajama-wearing ninjas. They think up an idea to get out of their cell by tricking the guard into thinking the telephone is for him. <laughs> this is a phone check. Is that you, Frank? WHY IS THE TELEPHONE OPERATOR WEARING A NINJA SUIT?! I MEAN, WHAT IS THE POINT?! Is the telephone operator a martial artist? If so, why isn't he out there fighting with the rest of the ninjas? What is the purpose of hiring a martial artist to answer the telephones?! IT MAKES NO SENSE! Stop it! So as you probably imagine, an entire boatload of ninjas can't seem to defeat three little children in bad 80s clothes. Why is the ninjas always scream before they attack someone? Doesn't that kind of alert them that you're there? <laughs> Whoa, who's this guy? <laughs> Kinda looks like an Asian Joker or something. Holy shit, this guy's psychotic! What the hell is he gonna do? Thank you, movie. Thank you for ruining the only possibly cool character in this entire film. You've dashed my hopes yet again. My apologies, my good man. After fighting like a zillion ninjas and an oversized bodyguard, Grandpa shows up to take on the evil Snyder in a one-on-one -on -one battle. And this is the portion I like to call, SPOT THE REAL GRANDPA! Let's see here. Stuntman, stuntman, stuntman. Grandpa! Stuntman, stuntman, stuntman. Grandpa! After a while, Grandpa starts to tire and eventually starts to get his ass kicked. But just when it looks like he's down for the count, Grandpa still has one ace up his sleeve. Ha! Ha! <gasps> Jabies! My one weakness! So Grandpa defeats Snyder, the FBI shows up, the kids are reunited with their parents, and they all live happily ever after. What do you friggin' do? Oh, wait a minute. That name looks kind of familiar. John Turtle Taub, Turtle Tib, whatever. How come I know that name? Holy shit, this guy's actually done a lot of movies, including Phenomenon, While You Were Sleeping, Cool Runnings, and even recent blockbusters like the National Treasure movies. 
So, how the hell did they get stuck doing this piece of shit? I mean, what exactly does this all mean? It means get out of crap as fast as you can. The other members of this movie didn't take that advice, and where did they go? Three Ninjas Part 2, 3, and 4. One of them with international sensation Hulk Hogan. So always remember, kids, quit while you're... in the position of quitting. Like, I should have quit watching this movie an hour and a half ago. It's stupid, uninventive, and reminds me of just why two film franchises don't make a right. Besides, it's obvious what the Ninja Turtle Home Alone crossover movie should have been. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat up Macaulay Culkin. Now that would have been a Christmas movie. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to.